In the late 1990s, American audiences went ape for Beast Wars. But over in Japan, it was a slightly different story. To fill for time during the extended gap between the Japanese broadcast of the Beast Wars cartoon's first and second season, Hasbro's Japanese partner Takara produced two lines of Japanese exclusive toys, each with their own accompanying cartoon, Beast Wars 2nd in 1998 and Beast Wars Neo in 1999. But the overly complex Neo toys didn't sell well, dealing the Beast Wars franchise a blow it would never recover from in the Japanese market. After the series limped to the finish line, Takara opted not to import Hasbro's Beast Wars sequel, Beast Machines, but to instead develop a new toy line and cartoon for the year 2000 that pivoted the franchise back toward vehicles, entitled Car Robots. The same year, Hasbro found itself facing similar problems when Beast Machines underperformed, leading the two companies to join forces and co-produce the next series, Transformers Armada. But it wouldn't be ready until 2002, leaving Hasbro with a year-long gap in 2001 that they suddenly needed to fill. These are the basics on how they did it when they made Car Robots the first ever Japanese original Transformers toy line and cartoon to be imported to their markets, where it was renamed Robots in Disguise. Set on Earth at the dawn of the 21st century, Car Robots was something of a generational mashup. On one side were the Autobots, led by Fire Convoy who were mostly brand new toys that represented the return of realistic vehicle modes to the Transformers franchise after five years of beasts, combined with the increased articulation and integrated weaponry that had become standard during the Beast era. On the side of evil were the Predacons, whose leader Gigatron was also a brand new toy with six separate modes, but the rest of whom were Beast Wars toys that hadn't been released in Japan before. Other toys in the line were reused from past series like Generation 2, Machine Wars, and even the original Generation 1 toy line itself. Catalogues included with the toys explained that the characters were from the far future, and that similar to Beast Wars, the Autobots had pursued the Predacons back through time to Earth. But this idea didn't really factor into the plot of the animated series leaving it vague as to whether or not Car Robots was part of the larger timeline shared by Generation 1 and Beast Wars. Hasbro exploited this lack of explicit continuity ties to reframe their version of the series as the first ever total reboot of the Transformers universe, with Fire Convoy and Gigatron renamed and reinterpreted as new incarnations of Optimus Prime and Megatron themselves for the English release. Hasbro's new name for the series, Robots in Disguise, was derived from the setup of the cartoon, which saw Prime's Autobots hiding in plain sight on Earth by operating undercover as vehicles used by unsuspecting human drivers and passengers. In keeping with the other Japanese exclusive Beast Era shows, and the Japanese dub of Beast Wars itself, the 39 episode series was a light-hearted, goofy adventure comedy that followed the Autobots and their human friend Koji Onishi as they attempted to rescue Koji's scientist father after his abduction by Megatron. The show primarily focused on the antics of the Autobot brothers, rough and tumble cowboy Exbron, by the book Prowl, and Lothario slacker Sideburn, and Megatron's hapless lieutenant, the poetry-loving shark Skybite, on adventures set all around the globe, which the Autobots could traverse with ease thanks to their subterranean global space bridge, and the coordinating efforts of their holographic computer, Ty. But as it continued, new characters joined the fray, like Scourge, evil clone of Optimus Prime with his own dark ambitions, and Optimus's embittered brother Ultra Magnus, with whom he could combine to form Omega Prime and an ongoing storyline developed centered on Megatron's quest to harness the power of Fortress Maximus, an ancient Autobot battle station buried on Earth, whose location had been discovered by Koji's father. The English dub of the series was produced by Saban Entertainment and aired on Fox Kids, both riding high thanks to the early 2000s boom in anime on kids' TV. 
The dub was typical of the era, largely faithful to the tone and story of the original, but with a new soundtrack, Japanese text and cultural references removed or altered, and with some characters' personalities rewritten. The Predacon Dark Scream, for instance, went from a samurai in car robots to a thug in robots in disguise. While Midnight Express was changed from a doofy kid into a British fusspot. New references to elements of Transformers lore were inserted into the English scripts. I'm Ty, Tactical Artificial Intelligence System, daughter of the Teletron 1 computer program. Hey, what are we, Viacon drones? They're on me like an Insecticon and a power core. And new robotic POV overlays and CGI scene transitions in the style of the Generation 1 cartoon were added. But what the dub is perhaps best remembered for is the fate that befell it following the September 11th terrorist attacks, which occurred only three days after the series premiered. This prompted a scramble to re-edit the series to remove scenes of and references to urban destruction. Sorry, Optimus. That's all right. One wrong blast to that plutonium energy generator, and this whole place could explode. What? Sorry, Optimus. If the plutonium generator inside gets damaged, the leaking zirconium gas could corrode our micro-circuitry. What?! With the result that some episodes ran out of order, and three didn't air in the United States at all. But although the cartoon had a troubled time on television, the toy line was a solid success, to the point that Hasbro even expanded it beyond what Takara had released. Though safety standards prohibited their release of Fortress Maximus, Hasbro bulked up the line with additional recolored toys from multiple past Transformers toy lines, released previously cancelled toys that had been planned for Generation 2 and Beast Machines, and even designed several brand new figures for the series. Ultimately, the Robots in Disguise toy line would significantly outlive the cartoon, with figures released under its banner until 2003, at which point it was overtaken by Transformers Universe as the new way to get recolored toys on shelves. The only comic book presence Robots in Disguise had was a single comic strip from Dreamwave Productions in their 2004 summer special. Readers were offered the chance to vote on whether they wanted a full-length Beast Wars or Robots in Disguise miniseries, and Beast Wars won by a landslide. Not that it mattered, since Dreamwave went out of business before it was published. In terms of legacy, Robots in Disguise is something of the overlooked middle child of Transformers, a mostly forgotten series that, when it is remembered, is usually as transitionary filler between the Beast era and the anime years of the Unicron trilogy. This isn't helped by the fact that, while it has had a complete DVD release in the United Kingdom, it remains the only English-language Transformers TV show without any kind of home video release in North America. A situation that doesn't seem due to change since, as far as anyone knows, the rights to the series have been held by Disney ever since they purchased Saban's library in late 2001. But none of this is to say that the series didn't have an impact. For starters, it revived and popularised the idea of Optimus Prime combining both with his own trailer to form a super mode, and with another Autobot into an even stronger form, concepts that would feature prominently during the Unicron trilogy. Additionally, the Robots in Disguise take on Megatron's evolution into Galvatron, and the supercharging of the Autobot brothers, cemented the idea of recolouring a toy to create a powered-up version of the same character, something that had barely been done before, but which it's hard to imagine a Transformers toy line without today. The series also put the concept of an evil black, grey and teal clone of Optimus Prime on the map, which would become a recurring theme that gave rise to copious toys over the years, known today as Nemesis Prime. A handful of characters from the series have been lucky enough to get new toys over the years, and to make appearances in IDW Publishing's comic books, chief among them the true breakout fan favourite character of the series, Skybite of whom there have been multiple new incarnations across several series, and who was even shortlisted for the Transformers Hall of Fame in 2012. 
Though Robots in Disguise remains considered its own separate universe, in the Japanese market, series like Kiss Players and Transformers Legends have gone back to explicitly establish that Car Robots is set in the same continuity as the Generation 1 and Beast Wars cartoons, and have continued the adventures of its cast in conjunction with some of those new toy releases. The influence of the series even continues to be felt on Transformers media and toy lines today in 2019, with a new version of Autobot Build Team leader Wedge debuting in Rescuebots Academy, and the new Ultra Magnus figure in the War for Cybertron Siege toy line sporting obvious design influences from the Robots in Disguise version of the character. With its 20th birthday just around the corner, a full-blown anniversary celebration for the series doesn't seem too likely, but Robots in Disguise has more than left its mark on Transformers history. Even if that other show did come along in 2015 to steal its name. And those are the basics on Robots in Disguise. Were you there back in 2001? Share your fond memories of the series in the comments, and don't forget to like, share, subscribe if you're not already, and if you can, please consider supporting the series on Patreon.